Hey, hey guys, um, back again for another video. Um, due to my injury, I haven't been able to get out and do much racing myself, um, which has actually led me to do this, which will be a little video um, as a preview to the New Zealand title um, this Saturday and Sunday. Um, here with me, I have Fergus Mana. He's a uh, an avid Speedway fan, and I will say he's probably more of a fan than, than most. He's uh, definitely got a sharp eye for talent and uh, knows what he's looking at, that's for sure. Welcome, oh, Fergus. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me, mate. It's a pleasure, you know. Um, it's two of my favourite pastimes is talking and race cars, so why not talk about some race cars? Yeah, lovely. It's just what we like to do here. Unfortunately, uh, like I say, being at talking all we can do at the moment, I've um, got to make the most of it. So um, should be double the fun, me and Fergus, and yeah, here we go. The New Zealand title is at Western Springs this year. Um, it was last held at Western Springs five years ago. Uh, with that, it was only a single night format, which also like crams the event quite tight, um, which usually means like heat racing is very, very intense. Um, we're lucky this year where they've actually spread it over two nights. There'll be three heat races on one night and then two heat races on the second night and the feature and repercharges um, after that. So it kind of spreads the night and it gives a broader um, spectrum to kind of gather points throughout the meeting, um, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, it brought a risk. It adds more risk in terms of having a chance to maybe have something fail or, or, or be in a crash. But it also adds to the um, where you might just have one bad heat race and it kind of you can you know balance it out. Um, I don't know what your thoughts on that, Fergus. You've seen a lot, also a lot of other speedway um, and other classes too, and you know this is probably more out of their book. You would say? Yeah, I'd say so. For most of the New Zealand tiles that I've been to, there aren't midget cars. They run the five heat format over two nights, and you're right. There's a little bit more of risk involved because there's the chance to you know have a wreck and you could be up all night fixing it. But there's also um, a chance for you to like race everybody, kind of like suss out you know what they're doing kind of work out their weaknesses and their strengths over the night uh, over the two nights sorry and it just gives you more chance you know to put more setup into your car do something a little bit different I think the two night deal is the best way to do it to be honest it's New Zealand title it's our biggest event you don't want it to just be a a normal night at the springs you know just with two heat races and a feature kind of thing so it kind of you know it adds more prestige I guess to a New Zealand title yeah, that's for sure. And like, I mean, I've just come from Greymouth, unfortunately, where I injured myself, and that was the same deal with with the five heats. And that was one big thing. I just we worked on the whole weekend was we just keep working on the car, heat race by heat race. And you know, by the end, we had it really dialed in, and you know, we felt like we we're on for a, a good run at you know getting the win. But unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. But like I say, this five heat format is probably the the standard when it comes to to New Zealand titles. Now, one thing we have been facing at the Springs just of recent is we've got the, we start off the season with a different track prep crew, and since we have got back Dave West doing the track, um, it's been a little bit up and down as he gets his feet wet, wet again, um, but I believe, you know, Dave West, he's been doing the track well, um, and hey, he knows what he's doing, and he, over the two nights too is usually something that we don't see a lot so this could really play into um some people's hands it also may not you know um yeah most definitely you know it's it's been a bit of a different track every night so far at western springs but i think it will be t a, to the advantage of the auckland cars racing their weight weekly you know they might kind of now that dave's had a couple of means to get his feet wet like you said you know it might be a bit the same hopefully when we go there so hopefully the boys will have their setup books out and and um yeah, have it all sussed out for the night. And there's definitely probably something to add too for the out-of-town cars, is being that you're no longer in a one-night one format where you're kind of getting two heat races and that's it. You know, the, the guys from out-of-town actually kind of get a decent amount of money's worth of racing or track time as, as say, you know, where you get five heat races to kind of figure out where to go and then, then you can deal with it in the feature as opposed to kind of getting just two heat races at and then having to do a feature all in one night. And, and over the two nights, splits enough and up, up, and up enough where you can go home and maybe, you know, just in between the two nights, just sit down with the crew and maybe have a discussion on, you know, what we think we need to do or what we're missing or um, try catch on something that maybe you've, you know, forgotten or maybe just, just a little bit off on. So, yeah. yeah so another part is by the numbers. Um, we've, you know, the track's being represented. Uh, we've got 19 cars from Auckland, which you would expect from... Uh, but Auckland being the home track and like you say it's 19 is a reasonable number unfortunately we've kind of lost a few cars here and there like like say with myself and a few others being that we are quite deep into the season but yeah like you say still a reasonable number yeah and we've got um, Bay Park group centered with four cars so there's a, a few of the Auckland guys have gone to Bay Park this year 
and registered with the mount. So they're still Auckland guys, so they still race there every weekend. But yeah, Bay Park with the next strongest number with four. Yeah, and to follow that, Palmerston North now have two cars, which Palmerston North this year have freshly uh, registered midgets as a class. So um, in terms of tracks in the south of the North Island or south, bottom end of the the north island it's really building the class down there which you don't really see the benefit up here but we will in time because it gives us more opportunities to run different tracks on a weekly basis which is one thing we're kind of being stuck with up in the north island at the moment where we've kind of only had um western springs and stratford as like full-time contracted class and you might get one or two meetings kind of sprinkled around at other tracks and then we've got a pair of cars entered from Kiki and Stratford, respectively. It's another track that the Auckland boys travel to, you know, most most weekends of the year. We, we get a lot of racing at those two tracks, so it's nice to see them represent and come to our home track for the title. But Stratford and Kiki are both awesome midget car tracks, and they both have a, a small field of cars contracted, but, you know, um, good cars for sure. So they should be strongly represented at this title. Yeah, and like I say, I guess that brings up the last point, which uh, unfortunately we don't have any South Island cars for the title. Um, I mean, it, with the year of COVID and everything, it, it's probably been a bit of a tough year in terms of uh, business-wise for some people. So, you know, traveling and, and putting it all out there and then with lockdowns happening, seems like on a daily basis at the snap of a finger, I guess it probably does throw a bit of uncertainty to the whole scenario, which is a bit unfortunate because we had Jeremy Webb, Jack Lowe and Tom Lumsden come up over the Christmas period and represent the South Island and they actually ran very, very competitively. competitively. And uh, like I say, just a shame that we don't have the South Island cars with us, but sometimes that's just the way it is. And just to further that, this will be the first time we've had an all, all Kiwi field for a long time i can't put a number or a date on that exactly between the last time we had an all kiwi field but i'd say out a rough number it'd be five to eight years possibly the last time we actually had a solo um uh, kiwi title as such you know with, with no uh, outside visitors yeah so that'll be a good thing you know for the fans because we get to see the one two and the three nz racing around all tracks around new zealand for the next 12 months because like you say the last couple of years we've had spencer basements come and won new zealand title Last year, I believe it was Zeb Wise got a number or something like that. So they take that away with them to America for the year, which is good on them. They won it. But it would be nice to see the 1, 2 and 3 NZ represented around the country for the next 12 months, you know, for the race fans. And that's for sure. I mean, even having a number on some of the cars, just for the small teams, because quite often that's one thing that you might find teams miss out on, is that carrying a number is a very prestigious thing in the Speedway New Zealand. So, um, like I say, it, it always means a lot to everyone. And, and sometimes... Like say, I shouldn't say it's been taken away from people, but it's it's a good represent representation of the sport is to have the numbers out there in racing, you know, because it kind of really shows the, I guess the pride of of it and actually what it means to people too, because a lot of everyone I should say wears it with pride, and there's no doubt about that. So with a list of uh, 29 entries that we currently have in front of us, um, it may be subject to change, unfortunately, but um, yeah, like I say, 29 cars is a pretty strong entry. Um, it's you know, there's been years we've probably been more like the 25-ish number, but um, for a, a North Island title, uh, 29 cars is actually not that bad of a number, really. Yeah, I'd say so, especially with, like, we've already discussed the absence of South Island cars, you know, international drivers. 29 is actually not too bad for midget cars. Yeah, something you probably take for granted is how many, you know, just the international guys fill up, because we usually got two to three at least international guys, and then, yeah, definitely the top up of the South Island guys. So Yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, we'll start off with, uh, this is kind of a rough order, but no specific order, um, really. So, um, Josh Matthews um, running the 55A Dave Pratt car. Um, normally F2 driver, and will be kind of running his first um, New Zealand midget title. Good experience for him, obviously. It's probably something he'll be there to, to get a lot of. And, you know, being that he's running an F2 currently, he's probably got a bit of a midget experience. For him, it's probably going to be more or less maybe just um, picking up on some of the competitors around him. And then uh, next on the list, we've got 46A Troy Jeffries. Now, Troy is a first-year driver. He's quite young. Um, his dad used to race back in the day. Um, so being thrown straight into the A grade budget, I mean, you know, straight into it at Western Springs, you know, that's one way to do it. But I think with an event like this, again, it'll be his first New Zealand title. He'll just be looking for experience, racing against the best. He gets to do that every week at Western Springs and it's going to help him in the future. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, we we'll keep going down the list. We've got uh, Reese Tinney in the 7K, our solo uh, Kiki entry. Um, again, this is rookie season, so he'll be holding it down for the King Country. Um, like I said, 
again, just another first year uh, driver. So again, rookie season, just big experience for these guys. So, you know, some people say, oh, why do you go if you're not in contention? But a big part of it is, you know, in five years time, you will have raced in another two or three New Zealand titles, which has that um, experience under your belt on racing in uh, tight and like real intense situations, as well as just getting to know and race around the guys, you know, it's another two nights of racing. So in, in perspective for our season, that's kind of like 10% of our season. Um, next on the intro list, we've got our 78 a Kent Palmer. So Kent's a third year midget car driver with no previous dirt experience, I believe. But again, he's just improving every single week. He's got the strong package of a Brecker with an Esslinger. And he's just improving every week, you know, starting to make passes and, and really doing well. So, again, he's done one New Zealand title before at Ruapuna, I believe. So this will be a second one. Again, just looking for experience. You're racing against the best. It's only going to make you a better racer in the future. Yeah, so, and then, like say, keep going on. We've got Matt Watson in the 43A. He's uh, been around the scene for probably five years or so, but he's just coming back from a bit of hi a hiatus from the sport. He's took about a year and a half off and has just come back and started to run uh, every meeting this year at the spring. So... Um, like I say, again, probably him, is, he's probably just catching back up to speed and he's probably just at the point now where he's caught up to speed and, and really ready to, you know, start putting his best foot forward. Next on the list, we've got our first Palmy car and that is Shane Dewar. Shane is an extremely good mini sprint driver. He was the 1NZ uh, the season before last and he's just jumped straight into a midget now. He's in a bit of an unfamiliar car to New Zealand viewers. He's got a Hyper Chassis, which they run in the States. And it's a Chevy motor, I believe. So not only is he learning a new class, he's learning a new car as well. And nobody runs them in New Zealand, so he's kind of flying that flag solo. But again, he's a great racer, so he'll just be looking for more experience, especially at the Springs, you know, against racing against the best. Yeah. Yeah, and like I say, keep going down. We've got Mark Willens. He's uh, another, again, one of the, the solo flag flyers for um, Stratford. Again, another top racer from down there. It's probably it's a place that we take for granted now is Stratford and the strength of cars that they're starting to build up down there. You know, a, a, a three, four years ago, the, the cars down there, there was probably two or three cars you kind of, you know, that will be able to maybe keep on pace with everyone. And But now it's they, they're starting to build up the, the class down there. And being that they've got Palmy now as well to run at, the, the class down there is really starting to flourish and, and really move forward. So, like I say, probably not someone you're going to say is there to take out the win, but definitely don't, you know, don't count him out, that's for sure. Next on the list, we've got the next Palmy boy, and that's Carl McGill. Carl also has come from the mini sprint class, which has a really, really strong following in Palmy. But now, you know, the guys in that lower North Isle are now starting to go the midgets, and Carl, Carl was one of the first to do it. He's got a new car this year. He's got a Terminator with the Esslinger. And again, he's been getting better every single man. He's come to the Springs a couple of times and got his first podium the other week when the midgets raced at Teams Champs. You know, that was a bit of a mare. But he had to he had to finish, and he finished third in that race. So that'll give him a lot of confidence boost, and, you know, he'll be better for it. Yeah, for sure. Now, next, next we move on to is Caleb uh, Antonio Rooney. He's someone who's kind of come through the what we would almost call the traditional Western Springs kind of scholarship, where he's started in quarter midgets, moved through to the F2 class, and then he's now in the A-grade midget. Unfortunately, this year, they've got a brand new uh, car and engine package, which they only debuted on Boxing Night, which means they've kind of got limited running on track. But sometimes the experience that you've already got you can kind of get away with not having the track time, you know, right in front of you. So again, someone who's maybe you a little bit shaky here and there, but you know, it's just a bit like riding a bike. You'll never forget. Next up, we've got uh, Travis Buckley. Now, Travis has been racing midgets for three years now. I worked on his car for his first year in the A grades and Travis is, Travis is fast. He's got no fear. And especially this year and at the later half of last year, he started racing sprint car too. So that's only helped his race craft. So he'll, He's definitely improved this year, as he has every year that he's been in the car. So he'll be, you know, one to, like, you know, push for those top 10 spots, really, if he puts a really good night together. Yeah, and we'll follow that up with our first of our um, former New Zealand title holders, Carl Warboys in the 15A machine for um, Shane Snooks. It's a bit of an unfamiliar package, the Beast chassis, but they've just starting to get their handle on it. You know, they've, they've been a little bit shaky to start the year, but... Like with everything, you know, they've, they've got a bit of momentum behind it and just starting to really build on it now. So look to see good things from Carl. Again, being that he's a current or formerly won a title, he's got the experience of, of being in that high-pressure situation and what to do. And probably you might find even might race a bit more relaxed in these scenarios, being that he's been there and done it. So definitely another one not to count out. And then next on the list, we've got the 10 car, Mitch Osborne. Now, Mitch is a Formula 2 racer. He's been doing it probably two or three years now, and he's one of the stars of that class. 
and now um, they built a new car at BSL for him, it's a Terra with the S-Linger, and he's done maybe one or two means at Bay Park for memory, maybe one at the Springs as well, so he's only done a handful of shows in the A grade, so again he'll just be looking for that experience, but Mitch is fast, he is very fast in that car, so watch for him to make some moves in the heat races. Yeah, definitely probably one of the sleepers of the, the whole deal. Um, again, we'll go next to Jaden Worthington in the 63 AIM car. Again, Jaden's a second generation driver, son of Calvin, and you know, anyone that knows the sport well, Calvin's probably one of the you know the key parts of, of the current kind of midget racing scene. You know, he spanners um, Hayden Williams and Hayden Guptill's car out of the BSL stable, and anything he touch, touches turns to gold most times. So, like I say, he's just de uh, debuted his uh, new uh, Fontana engine package just recently, and really starting to get the, their grips on that too. So, like I say. Bit of a different package, the Fontana Bricker that they're running, but like I say, being that Calvin's been in there and had his hand on it, it's got the Midas touch. Uh, next we've got Ben Cometti. Now Ben's only a third year racer, new to the sport, um, but man, the, the stuff that he's achieved in those three years in the class, he is one of the top dogs now. He is second year racer and he is really fast. He's got that bullet Esslinger package. He'll be one that I reckon will be another sleeper for this title. Yeah, and we'll follow that up with James Cossey, you know, someone who hasn't, again, done a lot of racing in Auckland this year, but he did uh, sign up and do the BT series and definitely left an impression on them down at uh, Miani. I believe he led most of the feature there and just got pipped by Brad in the last three or four laps. So, you know, it's not like he can't do it. And like I say, yes, he hasn't run that much, but I, I kind of made the bike comment earlier, you know, he's definitely a guy that you just, you can never count out because he'll always be around that top 10 ready to pounce. Next we've got Morgan McHugh. Now Morgan McHugh is his first year in A grade. He brought an A grade at the end of last year and did a couple of meetings. But this is his first full year with the new package of a CP3K uh, built by Tim Clark. And he's moved up from TQs. He's always been one of the really consistent dudes in TQs. And he's transitioned that straight to the A grade. Straight away he's been running top 10s, top 5s on a real good night. So again, we've talked about a couple of sleepers now. But he's definitely one that could push for a top 10 and maybe even a top 5 come title time. Yeah, and uh, like I say, Brayton Davison in the 67 car, probably someone who's had a bit of a shaky, you know, few years in, in the in the class, but as of late, in the last probably three or four meetings, he's really started to find his feet again. I feel like they've got their car really started to get to, uh, sorted out, and unfortunately he's been hindered with a few DNFs in terms of like mechanical stuff, but, you know, he, he's really been finishing races as of late, so, you know, they're kind of on that big building momentum and on their way up, so, you know, if it's anything to go by, this could be his night, potentially. And next we've got James Earl. Now, James has been mid racing midgets for quite a few years now, and he's always really consistent. And this year he's uh, got a new package with the Bullet chassis with his same RSI motor that he knows quite well. And he's, you know, he's had a little bit of bad luck this season, but he is fast when he gets going. So he will be one that will definitely make the feature field if all goes well. And, you know, he's a really, really fast driver. Yeah, definitely not one of the guys that shies away from putting in some hard work, that's for sure. So, yeah, Nathan Howell will be the next competitor in the 99A. Um, the Terra uh, BB7 Esslinger, bit of a different package, uh, but, however, they've definitely got on top of it as of late. In, as, if you follow their results, they've kind of been edging in just inside the top 10 and just slowly edging into the top 5. So, you know, they're coming on come title time, which is always what you want to have. And next on the list, we've got Ryan O'Connor. Now, Ryan, you know, speaking from a personal point of view, he was my hero going up in the sprint cars. He was the young dude that could mix it with the international stars. And now, you know, he took a couple of years away from the sport and he's come back in the midget car class and racing for Jeff Harper, he's got that BB7 bullet package, and he is Mr. Consistent of the midget car field. He is always there or thereabouts, top fives, top tens, every single weekend. And this year, he's taken another step because he's got back into a sprint car. So that's just helped his race craft. He's already won a feature race. He'll be, you know, again, Mr. Consistent. He'll be there or thereabouts. Yeah, so Brett Jr. Morris will be next in the 18A car. He formerly was running the bullet chassis, and he's just shifted to the uh, King. Um, the ex-car of Kyle Larson, so the car's got good heritage, you can't deny that. Um, being that he's just changed, it's a little bit shaky, but, however, he has put himself in a good position where he's working in with Justin Inslee, so it's not like he hasn't got the, the people behind him to make sure they're getting the most out of it, that's for sure. So now we're really starting to get into the people where you're looking at the, these guys are now the ones that you probably should be looking at when you're thinking of a winner. And one of those definitely is Hayden Guptill. Now Hayden's been in the midget quite a few years now, and um, again, he's got probably the best spanner man in pit lane working with him, and that's Calvin Worthington. And they've got quite a dedicated tr uh, crew 
working on that car. And again, Hayden, when he puts a night together, he's had a little bit of bad luck this season, you know, starting deep in features. But when he puts a night together, he's one of the fastest cars in the field. So he'll be one that will definitely be looking for a number and um, New Zealand's fastest school teacher. Yeah, like I say, so they'll follow it up with Max Guilford in 79A. He's currently, or this year, he's bought a, a brand new GRD Chev engine, which is definitely something we haven't seen here in New Zealand um, at all. And he's definitely put out a good name for it because he's been running super strong with it. Um, like I say, he's young potential. He's probably, you know, he's in that group of fresh blood in the class and um, it's actually quite refreshing to see a lot of the young guys coming through and really doing successful um, there was a phase where midget, we had kind of a bit of a stale midget class where there was no new blood coming through but like I said in the last two to three years we've just had you know every year there's been two or three new young guys that have come through and really kind of cementing the future of the class too. Uh, next off the list we've got Mr Aaron Hodgson now Hodgie as everyone refers to him is one of the fastest guys in the class he has quite the big heritage when it comes to the tarmac stuff. That's how he came up with go-karts and then circuit racing stuff. And since he's transitioned to dirt, I think he did two seasons in F2s and quite an old car and he made a lot of people, you know, stand up and see who he was. And now in his second year in the A grade, I think it was his third ever meeting, he won the North Islands. I can't remember the last time that that ever happened. And that guy is bad quick. So if he puts together another really good night, he's definitely on for a number, I feel. Yes, for sure. Now we'll follow that with Brock Maskovich in the 5A. Now Brock, just coming back out of injury after having a big crash at the Springs for about a month ago. Now, unfortunately, coming out of injury, you never know how he's going to come back. But me knowing Brock and the hard mentality he has, he will come back and come back swinging, that's for sure. He's just one of those guys who's super consistent. You just, you'll never catch him on the infield at the end of a race. He's always there making the, you know, the, the full laps and, and just putting them away. So definitely, like I say, he'd be a solid top three. You put your money on, that's for sure. The next one is uh, Ryan Baker. Now, everyone around the Springs knows Ryan Baker from his TQ prowess. He raced that class for many, many years as well, the top dogs that whole time. And he's did a couple of meetings at the end of last year in Shane's car, racing for the great Shane Alec. And now this is his first full year in midget cars, and he is straight into the top five. He is one of the fast guys out there, pulls off some mean slide jobs for the crowd, and, you know, just lets it all hang out. So, again, if he can put a real good night together, watch him to be a smoky. Yeah, he's filled those boots, of sh boots for Shane very, very well. Um, Hayden Williams is the next one on the list in the 27M. Um, Hayden's just come off uh, his big 50-lap win at Bay Park, you know. It's not easy to win against guys like Michael and Brad, and especially on a track like Bay Park, you know. So um, a one thing that you kind of do worry is that he's had the curse of the NZ title where he's unfortunately had some bad luck here and there. But it's like everything. You've got to come back and you've got to rebuild and come back stronger, you know. And, hey, you never know. This could be his year. It's a big thing that he's, he's been through and had the heartbreak. You know, it's only ever going to make you more hungry. So it could be this could be his year. We'll just have to see. And then next we've got Brad Moser. Now Brad has been one of the top dogs in midget cars in New Zealand for a long, long time now. And this year he's transitioned to the Greenway Racing Team, who have had a lot of success the last few years with Zach Darn. But unfortunately Zach couldn't get down this year because of COVID. And they put Brad into that car and it took them a couple of meetings to kind of get everything ironed out. And since they found that sweet spot, they have not looked back. Brad is, you know, one of, if not one of the fastest drivers in the country. And again, off the front row, he is my pick for the title, to be perfectly honest. If, if he starts off the front and, and gaps it, he is, yeah, he's the man, Brad Mosen. Okay, well, I'll have to counter that with Michael Pickens. The guy's won nine titles, so what's another one more for ten? Um, like I say, he's, they, he's nicknamed the Messiah, and we all know why. Definitely being the, he's had a stranglehold on the midget class down here for, you know, probably a decade and a half quite easily. Um, just the guy's full of experience and was always confident and, you know, just he always gets the rub of the green. There's one thing that he's just really good on. His his the way he can read the track and read what's going on around him, just sees him get out of a lot of sticky situations. And probably being that we're going to that five heat format, you know, he'll be at, with his track reading and being able to read scenarios, you know, you see he can get out of scenario some sticky situations just so easily. So that could really play into his part. But like I say, we're probably on for a big duke it out between Brad and Michael this year, that's for sure. It's probably one of the most hotly contested titles, I'd say, for the last few years. That's, that's, there's no doubt about that. Okay, we've got down to the nitty and gritty now, Fergus. We'll look at a top three in the dark horse. Who's your picks? I think this is one of the most tightly contested titles in a long time. So for taking it out, I'm going to go Brad Mosen. Uh, for 2NZ, I'm going to go Hayden Williams. And then for three, I'm going to go Ryan Baker. 
And then I reckon as a dark horse, we call him Mr. Consistent, I reckon Ryan O'Connor could be there when it comes to it. Because to, to win it, you've got to be in there at the end, and he always is. So he's my dark horse. That's tough. Tough to beat that one. But hey, I don't know about you, but hey, this one could be Michael's to win, I believe. So I'd put him as my 1NZ. Um, Ryan Baker, I mean, he's impressed. Just coming in, he's hit it out and mixed it with the big guys straight away. So we know he's fast. He just needs to put the night together. I believe he's probably going to be in there. And Brock coming back from injury, you know, he's someone who just, he's got a hard nose and just gets to the job, you know. There's, you can never count him out, and he's always there. So, like I say, Brock Maskovic, 3NZ. And for a dark horse, Mitch Osborne. We haven't seen much of him this year. He's been primarily running the F2 and just could come out of the blue, you know. A lot of people may forget him. So he just sneaks through, no one really notices, you know. So Mitch Osborne for a dark horse for me is, got, is my pick. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. He is the definition of a dark horse. Like you say, he's been doing a lot of F2 racing and only a handful of A-grade shows. So he's got the talent. So let's see it happen. Yeah, so that kind of concludes the uh, show, guys. Um, like I say, racing will be on the weekend at Western Springs Speedway, Saturday night, Sunday night. Gates will open about 5 o'clock for the public. So get on down. Um, like I say, it's going to be two nights of awesome racing. It'll be the best midget racing you'll see all year for sure. And like we've just mentioned before, this could be, you know, the jewel of the decade. It's, it's building up to be a big one. Yeah, definitely. So that's what you paid your lunch money for us to see these guys go at it. So get down on Saturday and Sunday night at Western Springs and um, see a new champion, hopefully. Yeah, hope to see you guys there.